Hello dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video, this is Back to Basics with Microsoft Flight Simulator Part 28 and in this video I'm going to introduce a very special guest indeed, Fly Lilo. If you don't know about Fly Lilo, I'll show you some footage on screen. They're a charity and organisation dedicated to promoting the inclusion of people with disabilities into the world of, of uh, video games and into the world of Flight Simulator. Lilo, who will be showing us some advanced techniques in the Fly-By-Wire A320. I reached out to Fly Lilo, I said, look, can you put a video together teaching us some techniques? Things like RNAV, LNAV, ILS in the A320, and they've come back and done that for us. I'm going to show you that footage in this video. I'm going to show you their video they recorded, in fact, in its entirety in this video. I'm also going to link down below in the description uh, Fly Lilo's webpage and their YouTube channel. I do urge you to go and check them out. It's a fantastic charity and it's actually very close to my own heart. So I'm very proud to make this video in collaboration with them. But okay, chaps, let's not dilly dally. Let's uh, get on with this video. Good day pilots, uh, my name is Ryde and today I have the controls of this A320, there's my friend Lilo from the Fly Lilo community and association. I want to apologize in advance for my English, uh, I'm Italian and this is the first time I'm doing this, this kind of video, uh, Lilo told me that he needs a voice for this video, so I'm trying my best, so apologize if I I do some grammatical error and I, I'm trying to work on it. <laughs> so let's go. Today uh, we're talking about the descent on our A320, especially we are talking about the VNAV and LNAV on this aircraft. And then we'll we will talking about the ILS. So we are now approaching our point Bibek. And as you can see on the navigation display, the display on uh, on our right, um, you can see an arrow pointing down. So that is our top of the sand. What is the top of the sand? The top of the sand is the point where our VNAV, so vertical navigation, has calculated the beginning of the descent. Everything on this profile is stored on our MCDU, is calculated by our MCDU. When we upload our route, when we prepare our aircraft for the flight, we talk, we, we insert on our MCDU some informations. And uh, those information are important to let our airplane know where we want to go, how high we want to be, and, uh, and what's our weight and balance of the aircraft. So with that information, the plane can calculate the VNAV and LNAV. LNAV stands for lateral navigation, VNAV stands for vertical navigation. So as the name said, the lateral navigation is actually uh, where the plane has to fly, so the turning, right, left, and the vertical navigation is where the plane has to be in the vertical profile, so up, down, uh, calculating the descent, the climb sometimes, etc. So now we have reached the top of the sand. As you can see, Lilo has set an altitude on the autopilot and pressing the button will let the airplane begin our descent. As you can see, on the left side of the altitude, there's a point, a green point. That point is really important because that's the vertical deviation. That's important because it is the information that uh, the plane give us to know where we are in the vertical profile. So now we have begin the descent and during the descent we will have some restrictions. 
what are the restrictions? The restrictions are some altitudes and rules that are written on the charts of the airport that give us an information about where the plane has to be in terms of, of speed and uh, altitude on that point. As you can see at uh, Gopal, we have some numbers. Flevel 210, Flevel 100 and 250 knots. So at Gopal, we have to be between Flevel 210 and Flevel 100. The VNAV knows exactly where to place our plane on that altitude, on that range of altitude. We will not be ever at level 210, level 100. We, we will be somewhere in between because the VNAV calculates the best way to pass that point. And then we have another restriction, 250 knots. 250 knots is sometimes important uh, in terms of traffic, in terms of, in terms of uh, control of the fluency of the traffic in this star. So as you can see, now the green dot of the VNAV is a little bit above us. So the plane pitches up to reach, so to slow the, the descent and reach the green dot. So in some seconds, we will see the green dot returning to our center. So now the VNAV on the A320 of the fly by wire is not really accurate sometimes. And as you can see, the VNAV jumps up and down, up and down. So in the rear aircraft is not like this. In the rear aircraft, the VNAV is calculated using the various points. So it will not think about another uh, VNAV path during the, uh, the descent, okay? On the left side, we have the speed and as you can see the plane now is to, to 250 knots and we have a range as you can see we have two lines and a triangle the triangle is the speed so the commanded speed by the mcu by the vnav and then we have two lines this is the range where the plane has to be during our descent so the speed will not every time be accurate. So we need to uh, have a range so that the plane tells us that he cannot always control the speed at 250 knots, but he can control the speed in that range. Okay, now our captain Lillo has set another altitude. This altitude is the altitude where we have to be for reaching our ILS. So the ILS system instrumental landing system is a system that helps us reach this runway in a most accurate way. The ILS system is really difficult. Now we don't have much time, but the most important thing is that the ILS gives us uh, two ways of controlling the plane, uh, the lateral navigation and the vertical navigation. The ILS gives us the same information that we have now during our flight. We have the LNAV lateral navigation and VNAV vertical navigation. During an ILS landing, we will have the glide slope that is the vertical navigation and localizer that is the lateral navigation. It's something more physical than the VNAV and LNAV because VNAV and LNAV are stored in our plane is mostly digital. ILS is using a station on the ground that gives a signal that reach our plane and that signal is exactly the flight path that we have to follow to reach the desired altitude uh, to desired uh, position during our approach. The ILS system is so accurate that we can use it to do an auto land Okay, so uh, today Lillo uh, will do a semi auto land because he will take the controls of the plane uh, really near the, the runway, but we will be in the range of the most accurate way to do an ILS. In, it's not difficult in this plane because you have the auto tune of the frequency. The ILS needs two things. 
to work. A frequency, that is the frequency of the station on the ground, is like a VOR. And a course. The course is the direction of the runway. Normally, in like a 737, or more simple, in, in a Cessna 172, we have to set the frequency in our NAV1 and set our course on our instrument. The A220 helps us because he inserts this information automatically. So when you set your arrival on the MCDU, you have automatically the frequency and the course of our ILS. We are now in the final part of our approach. Uh, we will uh, approach in uh, Roma, Fiumicino. We will see in the final part of the arrival. Okay, so now Lillo took control of the direction and uh, the, vid the vertical guidance of the plane. So he is now uh, turning the plane using the HDG and controlling the, the vertical situation of the plane using the vertical speed. Now he is inserting a direct to the initial point of the procedure. The ILS has an initial point that is the point where the glide slope is calculated to begin the descent. In this airport, the glide slope is 3 degrees and we expect to begin our descent in the point where I think when in the point where Nilo has set the, the direct. So as you can see in the navigation display, we have two rhombus. The vertical rhombus is the glide slope and the rhombus in the, in the bottom is the localizer, the lateral navigation. Now the FMA gives us the information that we have captured the glide slope, boxing it, and we have captured the localizer. The plane is now turning to intercept that localizer course that is, I, I remember you, is automatically set by the plane and has begun the descent. So now the plane doesn't see the altitude on the autopilot, but only start the descent using and following the glide slope. Now we have the two ramps exactly using the same method that we used on the lateral and vertical navigation. If we have the ramps on the center, we are in the best position. So now we have the lateral ramp, so the localizer at the center and the vertical guidance at the center. So we are following the correct glide slope and the correct localizer. Every ILS has some differences in base of the visual that we have the, uh, the runway. The ILS differs in some different category. We have category one, category two, and category three. It is a little bit difficult, but we can say that these categories differs from the visibility that we have the runway. The category one has the best visibility ever. So like today we are in, uh, we could do a cat one, okay? And we have the minimum, so the altitude where we have to decide if we continue or not our descent is a little bit higher than the other systems. The category two, and in particular the category three are used during the low visibility approaches. Uh, category two is a little bit lower altitude and the category three sometimes could have zero because the category three in some ways could do an automatic approach as we used in this approach since now uh, the the plane was set for the automatic landing and as you can see we we could do this we could do the same procedure this, that we do in category one with the category two or three but we can let the plane fly and it could land himself. Okay, we are on ground, good landing captain, and I think that we don't have much to say more about this system. I hope that everything is clear for you. And from me and Lilo, thank you very much for your attention. And have a safe flight. And as we say in Italy, 
Uh, blue sky. Goodbye. So there you go, some very impressive techniques indeed there shown by Lilo. Grazie my friends, much appreciate the collaboration. Like I said, do go out and check their webpage and YouTube channel. Fly Lilo, I want to make you an offer. In our live streams, in our Discord, we do uh, regular live streams, we were considering doing an airliner live stream. Now, fly Lilo, and Lilo, why not come up with some kind of route? I mean, you're in Italy, I'm in the UK, so maybe the UK to Italy, with a stop or two between. Now, obviously, you'll be flying the A320. I'm very rehearsed with the 146 Professional. So, maybe come up with some kind of live stream where we can combine different airliners. And I think people will really get on board with that. Maybe we can invite one or two other content creators to come along and do a fundraiser for your charity. Do contact me via email about that. I think that will be fantastic. Anyway, guys, do leave your appreciation on this video. Give it a like if you've enjoyed it. Do go and check out Fly Lilo's webpage and YouTube channel. Give them a like and subscribe as well. And I'll be seeing you very soon.